From one islander to another, Isle of Wight Radio proudly presents John Hannam Meets. Delighted to be in the Theatre Royal Bath in Somerset and delighted to be with one of my favourite actors, Ruth Gemmell. Nice to see you. Hello, nice to see you again. Yeah, we met uh, 2007. It's quite a long time ago. That's what, 10 years ago? No, nearly yeah. 11. <laughs> I fell in love with your small house you had in London. It was lovely. It was a beautiful house, yes. I've moved out of London now, but uh, yes, that is a very special place to me. Ruth Gilmour from Home Fires, Utopia, East Enders, Band of Gold, Murder and Mind, Fever Pitch, Silent Witness, and many, many others, of course. <laughs> and currently you're in the bath, but as we speak, it's only a couple of days from the end of yes. your play, isn't it? Yes, it is. We're doing. Uh, we're at the Usenoff Studio Space at the Theatre Royal Bath. We're doing the Whale, Samuel D. Hunter's play. He's a fantastic playwright, and it's a it's a beautiful piece. It's very moving. It's a black comedy, but it is a ultimately sad story, but it is pierced with tremendous wit and a lot of humanity to it. It's a beautiful play. I'm going to see it later. Yes. I'm terrible because <laughs> I cry at Call the Midwife, you know, so I'm bound to cry during your something. One of those things, isn't it? I know you were born in Bristol, but you grew up in the North East, didn't yes, you? Yes, sometimes people always say I'm from the North East, but I'm, I was born in Bristol. Yes, grew up in the North East. And that's very close to Bath, of course. Yes, it is, yeah. Yes, Bristol, yes. It is indeed. Ruth, you had a sort of an early struggle in a way because your parents divorced when you were quite young. Uh, when I was five, yeah. yes. And so uh, my mother raised me and my four siblings in the North East and my father was down in the South. But, you know, but it's not an unusual story really no. now, is it? Did that seem a problem at the time? I would say that... Most children find that difficult, and I think it things like that always inform you and your character. But there comes a point when you move on and you make your own choices, and they loved us equally, and we loved them. So that's the way it goes. Oh, but yeah. yes, I think it's yeah, I think it is a, a tough one for children. I know you went to a, an all-girls school, I didn't did, you? I did, yeah. Did you start acting there or not? Really? D I did. I seem to remember doing, and I can't even remember what the <laughs> the exams were, but I do remember doing some exams and being involved in the, the plays at the end of term, and I, I certainly had a love for it, and I had some lovely teachers and, and stuff like that, yeah. I know you went to Webber Douglas in yes, the end, I didn't did. you? Yes, I did. It doesn't exist now. <laughs> that, isn't it? That's showing my age, isn't it? When people will think, where? <laughs> you don't look it. <laughs> and I know you actually went to live with Dad for a while, didn't you? I did. I did. So I, uh, uh, after my O levels, I moved south to live with my dad for, to do my A levels because I, I sort of wanted to move towards London. I think at the time I was young and I didn't really know, and I just assumed you had to go to London. So that was my journey really and it was nice to live with my dad having never really lived with him not that I remembered so it was it was a nice thing to do and that was in St Albans oh was it yeah nice yeah. St Albans it is lovely yes yeah. I probably didn't like it at the time <laughs> but but it, it, having been back since it's actually quite a nice city <laughs> <laughs> yes it is <laughs> Theatre, TV, movies, radio, you've done all sort of aspects of theatre work, and, and haven't you? Mm -hmm. When you were sort of very young, did you hope to have a career where you were going to sort of encompass loads of different things? I think so. I don't think I ever had one in particular that I had in mind that I wanted to focus on. And I've been lucky in that I've never found one to be a favoured medium. Some people much prefer theatre, and I can understand why, but I've equally loved other mediums. I love radio. I love doing radio You've done quite a few plays on yes, radio before, Yes, I you? just... They're magical, and there is never an ego in doing a radio play. At the end of uh, June, I'm about to go and do the final series of The Pillow Book, and it's one of my favourite jobs ever. I love it. <laughs> when you played a nurse in you, oh. in you, Me and It, which yeah. was about 1993, yes. you've come an awful long way since then, haven't you, really? <laughs> I think I, my line was, get back into bed, Mrs Henderson. I think that was it. So, And I remember, I think there was a shot of my ankles as I'm walking away. 
and my father said he could tell that was me because I walked like my mother. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes, apparently. <laughs> I think the first thing I really took note of you was Band of Gold, which was still is one of my all-time mm. favourite. I watched the first episode mm-hmm. the other night, which you were in quite a lot, obviously, and uh, I ended up watching the whole first series because it's yeah. that sort of thing. It, it, it is really? a wonderful series. It was lovely for me because... I had never really done very much television and had, I think, my character gone on to other episodes, I probably wouldn't have uh, been given that opportunity. But because I died in the first episode, I I was. And what was wonderful was that for the rest of the series, because I had been murdered, they never stopped talking about me. So it was like I was in all the other episodes. (laughs) So it was very lucky for me. Looking back, I'm thrilled to interview (laughs) Cathy Tyson and Geraldine Uh James and... Barbara Dixon and you Lovely. from that series and actually you were the first on screen weren't you the first yeah, yes, s- the yes, first yes. scene in Van der Gold episode one <laughs> was you I think your family anyway funny yeah and then of course Fever Pitch that was an yeah. early role for you a big movie yes, yes, wasn't it yes I have very fond memories of that. Nick is a, a wonderful man. All of the company the director David everyone was lovely and yeah, that was a lot of fun. And of course, I think since then, Colin first sort of... He has, hasn't he? ...went up into <laughs> mega stardom, didn't he, really? <laughs> he has indeed. <laughs> M- Mrs Hughes in that, weren't you? <laughs> I was. I love the bit when you... I suppose you were... Early on, you were not that friendly, and, uh, and all of a sudden, <laughs> you invited him in for coffee, and you were sort of a bit of a prude then, weren't you? And all of a sudden, you said... You can stay the night if you want. Do you remember that? <laughs> I do remember yes. that, yeah. And it sort of set the film up, I think. It was terrific, really. <laughs> but when I watched it again the other night, are you a football fan? I'm, I'm not? not. I think I've sort of had, I'm a bit of a fair weather friend. So, you know, sort of towards the end of some big tournaments, I might be interested in, in who's doing what. I'm, I quite like it. I probably will get into trouble for saying this, but when <laughs> England is out of the way and then you can actually just enjoy the underdog or something like that. <laughs> yes. So but I'm 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 not much of a sports fan in anything really. Not an Arsenal <laughs> I'm, fan. No, then. I'm a beer monitor. I think yeah. I was for a little while. I went out with someone who was an Arsenal fan. So you, you sort of by osmosis you kind of take on board something. Because <laughs> Fever Pitch was all about an Arsenal fan. It wasn't was, it? yes. You actually went to a match, didn't you? Oh, yes, I did. Was and that at Highbury or was that not yeah, at Highbury? Um, I've uh, been to both. I've been to Highbury and to the Emirates Stadium. Where they filmed, um, that must have been at Highbury, No, it? that because it, at the time it was all about the, the seating, wasn't it? And, ah, and yes. Highbury had the seating. So I think we filmed, if, if my memory serves me correctly, in Fulham because it had to be the tiered kind right. of stadium. You were yeah. getting jostled and hassled at that football yeah. <laughs> and all the crowd surging forward. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I do remember years and years ago my elder brother taking me to see uh, Darlington versus Swansea, I think it was, in Darlington. And I remember that. I remember he, <laughs> I was the one that had to go and get the meat pie and bovril at half time. <laughs> that, was, that was my role. So I'm always the beer monitor, basically. <laughs> I love Murder in Mind, and you were in, did a, a great one with Nicholas Lindhurst. Didn't oh you? yes, do you remember? Yes, I do now. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> really bad landlords. <laughs> yes, he, he was really creepy in that one. <laughs> <laughs> he probably was. Yes. Yeah. I don't remember Blue Dove. That was about. Oh, the, I think that was. Uh, I. It's sort of. It's a pottery story. <laughs> yes, in it Stoke. was. Yes. Yeah. It was set in the potteries about a, a, a company that was trying to survive, as so many of them are. And it was only one series we did, but I think it was sort of, it didn't really materialise, so I'm not surprised. you. I've never seen it either. Oh, I, think okay. I, no, I think I might be shocked if I did. <laughs> but, um, but I have very fond memories of doing it. Uh, in fact, a friend of mine who I met on that job is coming to see it tomorrow. Oh, so, really? Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> OK, let's meet the families. Oh, sorry, wrong show. I'm Les Dennis, but you're listening to John Hannah Meets on Isle of Wight Radio, in-person interviews. In 2009, when you, you played Deborah Dean, didn't you, in East Enders? Oh, yeah. Yes, I did. Was that, going into a, a, such a big soap, mm-hmm. was that different for you? Because you'd 
a lot of your stuff had been almost one-offs, hadn't it? Guest yes, appearances. Yeah, How yeah. did you... Was there a great difference? Or well, not? I wasn't a regular. I was sort of brought in for a storyline for a couple of regulars. Yeah, you were Ryan and Whitney's mum. Yes, I was. <laughs> but they didn't yeah. know, did they? No, or, no. no. <laughs> yeah, I was a very... yeah. Bit of, I always play bad mothers, don't I? Yes, you um, do, actually. I do, yeah. <laughs> but bad mothers are all sorts of psychopaths. It is a real skill, I think, working on a soap, and, a, and it was a bit of a baptism of fire for me. But I couldn't have been looked after any better. The, the, the family that I was around, you know, the storyline family, they, they were wonderful and really sort of welcoming and just lovely. It was a, it was a really nice atmosphere, but it is a skill that, mm. that was a bit of a shock to me. <laughs> I went to the, the set of Corrie to do some interviews, oh, yeah. and uh, just before people were going to film, they were still wandering around saying, I can't start on learning my lines, you know, <laughs> you I'm know, on in yeah. about five minutes yes. or something. <laughs> <laughs> you did mini series too, didn't you? Inside Men, uh, you oh, did. Oh yes, yes. And the fades, you the did. The fades, yes. yeah, yeah. Did you like those sort of mini series? I did. I think the writing was brilliant. I quite liked my character in the in Inside Men. She that was, was a heist, <laughs> wasn't it? About yes, it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they and they were they were brilliant. I yes, I liked that. And the fades was quite a fantastical story. I did laugh because. Um, I was supposed to have superhuman powers and <laughs> by the time it came I, I don't think I had any at all so I, I was a bit of a strange old character really but it, yeah it was about dead spirits it as was well. yeah um, but it, but the writing it was uh, Jack Thorne Jack Thorne I'm pretty sure it's Jack yeah. Thorne it was quite extraordinary and it's that and that's exciting like so Utopia I loved being involved in that was Amazing. Yeah, that was a more modern sort of network mm. organisation, all about stuff online and everything. Wasn't yes, it? and I was like in a little bubble. I was like the normal world <laughs> and didn't really understand that this other thing was going on. Uh, but but as a piece, it was extraordinary. You were Jen Dugdale in that, weren't you? I think I might yes, have you been. Were. Yeah. <laughs> You've done your homework. <laughs> <laughs> and Silent Witness, you played Kerry. Cox in there, yes. yeah. That was a terrific, well, it's still going, good series, isn't it, really? Yes, um, well, yes, yes, so that was the very first series yes, that I did. Yes, it was, because yeah. you did about eight of those, but the strange thing is, Ruth, you came back later on. Not I know, <laughs> I think I've done it a couple of times. Yeah, Once I came back as a policewoman a bit later on, and then I came back as somebody else, and I can't remember who. <laughs> It seemed odd that you... you I know. Were... Well, you spotted it, but mate, hopefully no one else did. <laughs> but lots of people have done that, haven't they? Yes. I've met yeah. people who have been in the bill, I don't yeah. know, six or eight times. I've been in the bill for about four times as <laughs> but well. But all different parts. <laughs> yes. <wasn't it? laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I want to talk about home fires, because I mm. loved home fires. As did we. And... Uh, I can't understand, Ruth, why they took it off. I, I just can't understand it. There was over six million watched it every know, Sunday night. I know. We and it was really so understand. gripping, wasn't it? It was wonderful to be involved in. And I have to say, I couldn't have met a lovelier bunch of people. We still meet up on a, not on a regular basis, because we've all got dissipated lives, but we meet up as often as we can still. And and that's a testament to the the team that, that was put together. And yeah, well, I, yeah, we were very sad, very sad. Sarah, the vicar's wife. <laughs> now, Ruth Gamble, what I want to know: if there had been a third series, <laughs> would you have given in? Well, well, I it looked like I was heading that way. It did, yeah. <laughs> but it was very t- difficult. He he got married by then. Yes. Although that wasn't going to be a happy marriage, I should imagine. <laughs> but there were some great individual storylines, like yours, but there were good storylines everywhere, oh, they were, weren't yeah. there? Yeah, yeah. And it was, a lovely, it was a lovely team, you know, of, it has to be said. It was lovely as a, an older actress to actually be, to be given those opportunities because quite often you're sort of sidelined and, and, you know, and that's just the way it has gone on for a very long time. So it was lovely to have that opportunity in a... Um, a very strong female-led cast, and and the men were fantastic mm. as well. I was going to ask you about that because I feel there are slightly more parts for I suppose older actors, if you like, than there were. Was that a fact? Or for not really? for no, I, I think you're right. I yeah. think, in fact, I'm reading something at the moment, and it is very much like that. It's almost like people are listening to all sorts of injustices. So, and those injustices are being taken on board. And and that's 
brilliant. So yes, I mean, it's a start, you know, and that's lovely. Because the strange thing is, a lot of young people don't watch TV, they're out. And a lot of the yeah, programmes, yeah. you know, yeah. w- which are suited to, well, should be suited to older viewers in a way, shouldn't they? There is something about experience as well. I mean, I think that sort of shines through. I mean, I'm not saying that younger people aren't because they are very talented and it's important, but equally important is an older generation or a, a different demographic, race, whatever. It's, it's all equally important. You've done a few sort of Father Brown, that's a series. What, it's a daytime series, isn't it? Yes, I've only done one. Yeah. Five, but yes, yes. That was lovely. That was very nice to go after the Cotswolds. That was really <laughs> lovely. It's so beautiful. And you've done, well, you've done them all, Inspector George, Gently, Casualty, Midsummer Murders. <laughs> Penny Dreadful, that was more recent, wasn't yes, it? That, yes, that was... Um, Did you like that? I've only seen a little bit of it. You see, I'm not very good, am I? Do you not watch yourself when you... No, sometimes I do. It's just being being available to me, that's all, sometimes. But it was bonkers, bonkers to do. I mean, it was sort of extraordinary. They had taken over an entire plot... Uh, in Ireland, so they had sort of huge sound studios that were catering for different sets. I've only visited people's sets like that. I've never actually worked on one, so it was amazing. And then one of these huge hangars was entirely the wardrobe department. I mean, it was sort of extraordinary, so it was very exciting to be a part of. Waking the Dead, you certainly did a few of those, didn't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, and I... I think I came back as somebody else again. So I think I played an old flame of of um, Trevor Eve's character and then years later played some psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> Heidi, hi! Hello, listeners. You are listening to John Hannam meets live theatre i know you do love doing yes, live theatre, do. don't you yeah i think the last time we met you were probably at the in, national uh, you? in quorum boy yes. yeah yeah good play that didn't it you? was wonderful i wish i'd been able to see it because i you know the especially the, at the end the near drowning scene is it was so spectacular ruth when you do things like that do they not video it even for because um, i think well i think certainly it's certainly then, I mean, they certainly didn't do a live perform. You know the way way often they do live performances. Oh yes, performances. to theatres. Yes, don't they? and I yeah. don't. They certainly didn't do it of that. They might have videoed it for their own archive, mm. but it wasn't necessarily oh. available to us. But but that would have been static as opposed to getting in amongst stuff, which yeah. is slightly different, isn't it? Yeah. Really. Yeah, I love a play called Betrayal. Which oh means, yeah. I love the movie with Jeremy yeah. Irons and. Yeah. Uh, but it's an unusual story, isn't it? Because it's, it's, it's sort of backwards. back to front. Yeah. 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 Turn of the screw, the importance of being <laughs> earnest. You've done some biggies, haven't you, really? I suppose there are a lot of classic stuff, yeah. yeah. Death in a Maiden, that's... Uh... Oh, that's a, yes, that's an, another favourite job of mine. Was I, it? I, yes, I loved that. That was in Salisbury. That was... Was it? Yes, that was... Uh, I loved that experience. Yeah. Because that's an odd sort of play in a way. It's, it's good... an extraordinary play. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. you do a sort of um, a scary type or, or, or an unusual play, does it take you a while to, to really get into it? I think I often find when something is traumatic, I find the rehearsal process traumatic um, and sometimes don't sleep. <laughs> oh, really? And then... And then in, I think, because everybody is finding it traumatic, there is often a bond that forms between you as actors. And then the playing of it, I find a hoot. Now, not not that I'm not taking it seriously, but in between, it's almost like you need something that is light to be, enable you to give that part of yourself that is so traumatised. I think there's a, there was another play that I did that was a very similar experience the the Neil Labute play and that I found traumatic to rehearse and yet with the company laughed my socks off <laughs> not on stage I no, know, I know what you mean. but you know backstage or or afterwards or and certainly with Death and the Maiden it was the same yeah if it's a very serious yeah hard you you play, need something you to an outlet I think I think you, I I do anyway other people may be different how do you learn lines because people do them. Yeah, they they get harder actually as you get older. I'm really sure they do. do yeah. <laughs> they really do. 
Sometimes I have to record them so that I can I can hear them. Uh, sometimes it's just drilling them in. I get other people to help me. Uh, and as soon as you find it difficult once, you start to panic can creep in. So you have to then start finding a way to kind of just keep going. But you know, yes, not my favourite thing these days. It astounds <laughs> me when I go to plays and people are so you know. Brilliant, word perfect, and never, never. but it becomes innate in in the character and the conversation yeah. that you have. I think sometimes the harder ones to learn are when you're not having a conversation with someone and your monologues, if you like, are random and don't seem connected. So until you find a connection, you're just fishing for something. Right. Whereas a conversation, you start to understand and learn the intent which is probably sometimes why I end up paraphrasing. <laughs> I'm probably getting into trouble. You've been on our TV screens for over 20 years, haven't you? Um, yeah, it has yeah. been a while, yeah. yeah. Yes. It's a bit of a shocker, isn't it? Oh, no. <laughs> and you've, you've had so many different... I know you said sometimes you're typecast in certain <laughs> roles, but you've had quite a few different type of roles, yes. haven't you? Yes. Yes, I have. I know yes. you've been a nasty mother, but you were a vicar's wife in the other one. Yes, so I was. was. That yeah. was probably the most wholesome character <laughs> I've, I've played. <laughs> Would you like to have done more movies? You've done one or two, haven't um, you? I think there's. I mean, there's always stuff that you'd like to do. I, you know, I'd like to do more theatre in London. I'd like to do more film. I'd love to do more radio. I, you know, and good series, things like that. I think I've been. Lucky, I think it's been kind to me. I mean, on the other hand, I also know I've done long swathes of unemployment. That's sort of it's sort of part of it. People say sometimes uh, that I'm always working, and I'm not. It's just that sometimes that if you do things, they all seem to go out at the same time. Mm. So it looks like I'm never out of work, but it's so not the truth. Mm. <laughs> the, the, you know, I'm <laughs> as unemployed as the next person sometimes. You played Tracy Beaker's mum, didn't you? Another bad mother. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, but, but only for a, a nanosecond. I think the, the t- character of the mother in the main series is a cartoon. So yeah, any career regrets at this stage or not really? Um, Anything you wish you'd have done that you perhaps turned down or not really? But, probably, and I can't think no, of them now. But right. I probably, ha- I probably have said no to things. I was going to say, going back to Home Fires, what were you talking about regrets? Obviously, the whole company regretted yeah. that you didn't go into. A th- yeah. Third series. Were you together when you were told, or were you just told individually? Oh God, I can't. You know, I can't actually remember. But when you were doing the second one, I think one, we were we were told separately. I think I think it, we, we'd already finished, so we must have been told separately. Right. Yeah. Yes, because we'd finished the second series, and I think we were waiting to hear. So. Because uh, in a way, one or two things were left in the air. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you had no idea. Well, you didn't, because they didn't do a third series. No. But it would have been interesting, wouldn't I it? I think the writer Simon Block, he's carrying on the story in a way, and I think Is he's. He? I think he's doing it in in um, as a novel. I think. I think oh. I'm right in saying that. So you can kind of catch up with the characters that way, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ruth, how do you chill out when you're right away from work? How, what's your sort of turn off, really? Uh, not working or, yeah, well, or during the day relax, here kind of thing? No, when you're not working, how do you relax? What do you do away from the job, Gardening. if you like? I've, uh, yes, you? Yeah, uh, yes, having moved out of London, I had the tiniest garden in London, probably the size of this room, which is like a glorified bathroom, isn't it? I suppose the size of it. And, well, you saw it, and, mm. and I loved my garden. And uh, I've moved somewhere where there's a lot, <laughs> a lot of garden. So, unfortunately, I have a lot of weeding to do, right. which is probably not the nicest thing. I, I'm very good at pots. Are you? <laughs> yes, but I'm not good at anything else. So, but it is very lovely to plant stuff and then see it come to life. That's quite lovely. It's wonderful. Ruth, I know your next project is a radio play, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You don't have to learn lines then, do you? Is that a fact? No. <laughs> no that, <laughs> I bet that's that, good, that, isn't that, it? That, yeah. I don't even have to do any action. Somebody else does it for me. <laughs> so, yeah. And all the sound effects are fantastic, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> I quite like radio plays because each person has a different sort of mental picture of what's going on and yes. what the people well, look yeah. like. And that's what's so wonderful about the imagination, which is, you know, like this play... You will have your own interpretation of what it's about and and 
what happens next or whatever. And I, that's what's wonderful about the imagination rather than being spoon-fed. So your next play comes out when? Ooh, I don't know when it will come out. We've not been given the transmission date yet, but it's recording at the end of June, so I should imagine a month or so after that, I'm guessing. Can I thank you for your time? I thank you very much for coming down. real pleasure. <laughs> I like chatting to you, and I love Bath, and particularly on the <clears> train when you come into yes. Bath. It's, a, it's such a great view. And, of course, it said it was going to rain all day. <laughs> We're both we... sweltering, aren't we? Yeah, and the sun's just come <laughs> out. <laughs> Can I wish your career continued success? Thank you very and, much. And uh, I hope one of these days um, we might get a hat trick, perhaps. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Ruth, and Thank good luck. Thank you very much. It's great. He's got a swell personality. He meets and greets the stars with such amenity. Good enough to make you coming out of the street. John Hanami. That's right. Today you've been listening to a John Hanna Meets Away Day in Bath. It was an eight-hour round trip, but well worth it to meet the wonderful Ruth Gemmell. Incidentally, I did go to the whale after the interview and it was a very, very emotional show and, like many others there, I did shed a tear. It was a brilliant show and one of those that you talked about for quite a few days after you'd seen it. Keep looking on the Isle of Wight radio website, the John Hannam website and YouTube for more John Hannam Meets new interviews. Bye-bye for now. I'll invite Radio.